Vre de Fort, Republic of Oranje. I'm 28. Something stupid. Orani's lit. Orani's literature. It's what I studied at the university. Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Oranese. All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. No. Ravishulian Lit is about how magnificent and serious Ravishul is. It's about how you have to save the world. That's just a phase the Revisholian hero goes through. Before they plunge into full core humanity and world saving. Nothing. I do nothing with it. Cool. I've made more money by just being than I have with Rani's lit. Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Rani 37. <laughs> I'm afraid you can't. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Okie dokie. The record. So official. Yeah. It's pretty deluxe. I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol. Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez. And because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. I'm wintering. How long? About four months. Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol. I heard this is where the washed-up disco has been go. If you say so, officer. If you say so. Yeah... I've contaminated it pretty bad. The contamination spreads from room to room. First, I escaped upstairs. The sad got that too. Then I found the handle for the summer door. For me, it's a mix of me with a lack of cleaning services. Talk around the establishment is, you have an industrial sad spill in there. Cool. I think I'm developing a pinch of that too. It hasn't done wonders to my taste in interior decoration. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. With money, sir. It's not exactly the NT star size caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? Better safe than sorry. Oh, yes. One of my favorites. Like, not being able to stay up for 36 hours. Not being happy. It cures those ailments. Very funky. You tell me, officer. I've been trying to open it. 
in case the contamination gets to the roof and I have to move on. No luck. Okay. Yes, you're just one room away. Very personal. You do not need to know that. What you need is to ask normal police questions, like... Something difficult? I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? By sexually assaulted, you mean raped? Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? It is. It's murderously early. I'm amazed I'm awake. Why am I even awake? Yeah... I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery, sexual assault maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Pretty much. We partied. A lot of partying going on. With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. Please, you're alive in 50. I've known people who party so hard they're dead at 14. What did you do when you partied? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. I guess you can say that, yes, a bit. Lovers is such an emotional word. But there was something there. We did enough drugs for there to be. How did you two meet? Downstairs, at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment, uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. I'm 89% sure. You know how it is. Hmm. Maybe you don't. In conclusion, officer, I'm gonna go with a mild to medium not raped here. I'm sorry, miss, but we need a definite statement. Let me make this 100% clear then, officers. I was not sexually assaulted. Would I be this flippant if I had been? Oh yes. I've had a great view, from the roof, 
out of the bathroom window in my dream. You called us, DRCM. Yes. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, we call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravachov, miss. Because I couldn't handle it anymore. None of these people called. He just kept hanging there. Then they started stripping him. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the Union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, you'd still be hanging there. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him like he is now. I can't talk about his, I don't know, hair. I know it's difficult, miss. You have? Not like I do, I imagine. You don't want to know. I can see the similarity, yes? Funny. Funny how? Nothing. I also saw him. We had a long inspection and that sort of thing sticks with you. Let's move on. He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military. Worked for Wild Pines. And against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? They're frequent guests downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. A little, yeah. Like you parted with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. I hope not. Actually, I know that's not the reason. I'm careful about that kind of thing. Not crossing the wires, you know? But that's probably where they got the rape idea. Men like that? I don't know. It's the way their imaginations work. I suspect it's what they'd like to do to me. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. 
Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. You think so? Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. How may I assist you? Hold on. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? Billy. Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment. I'll have to check our database. Yes, hello. Are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Mm -hmm. 
sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Marie? She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh, one second. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? You're right. It's too this true. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Hello? Who is this? The police? A moment, please give us a moment. Come in. The door is open. One second. Um, this game. It's you from the book stand. Did you come to bring my cockatoo back? I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. Sorry, I'm rambling. It's just that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So, how can I help you? 
What did you say? Oh. Oh. But he was just... We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? Was he drunk? I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? It's probably the right thing. Thank you. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... We should step outside and talk. I'll call the station when we're finished with the day, and let them know the name of the deceased. That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. They'll manage. Let's go.
Hold on. Looks like he's been dead for a while. I'm surprised no one found him before you came along. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. Looks like... But that's just a... The woman you met at the book stand? The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. I can wash it for you. But it's going to take about a half an hour. I could use a breather before another rainy day begins. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Oh, that's it.
The legend returns. You know the dance. Smokeable smokes. Pissable p See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> what? This guy, this guy. Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. It was. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. No, those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. But the idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingers. Quite three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila! What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real, if you want it. Yeah, be careful, it's extremely flammable. So, what's the deal, friend? Want the spirits or not? So what do you want? Finally came to your senses, uh, buddy boy. Ain't nobody else going to give you a price like that. <laughs> Had to let life squeeze you to get that, huh? Sure, friend. A bottle of high-quality spirits coming right up. That'll be three real, and you'll practically rob me at this price. My kind of guy. Here you go, friend.
Tequila Sunset. Mm-hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Mm. Ah. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer, and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept, if you ask me. It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach. The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, The time hath come for tequila sunset! The end of all things! Your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. I'm not sure. I think you were the event. Tequila Sunset. You know, as opposed to a Tequila Sunrise, which is long gone. Yeah, I agree. Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. 
In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's... You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. No specifics though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop, and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, Stupid! 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 It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution. A little... motivational package. Booze! Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Not much, but it will do. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I call a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Twenty-two full-time employees, an all-star team, a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. Wet, okay? It was raining really hard. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. 
Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Ouch, indeed. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be one of the best. <laughs> Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. The hobo lifestyle definitely has some perks. Not having to pay rent, first and foremost. Not being responsible for 20 other people is nice, too. But that charm wears off pretty quickly. Before you know it, you're wearing a shit-stained tracksuit and spending your days picking tear. Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket. But then I lost it, too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. My agency. Yeah. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high-concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Rebeshaw who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. I know! It was fucking awesome! Too bad I went on a jog, unleashing a cascade of doom. What? 
You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on, feel that primo material. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosie. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. I'm all ears, Tequila. <laughs> 